Now I'm going to place an eye copy and select the conveyor segment as before. It's just giving me a warning about um, not having saved the changes. And you'll see here I can now select the front point of the conveyor. So I'm going to pick this point at the end of the line. You'll see it snapped to that point. And now it's asking me to pick the bed level, which is this top line. The floor line for the first set of legs, which if I look side on, you'll see here that we want that foot to stop on that line. So I can select that level there. The, the leg of the conveyor will update. And the floor line for the second set of legs. It might be worth mentioning here that the foot is going through the floor line there, but what this line really would be would be a line that is a nominal distance above the floor, and then the remaining gap may be packed out or um, you know the, the floor grouted to suit. You'll see here I can also select the bed width. I can change the dimension, but I'm not going to this time. Now click Next. And it gives me an option to copy, replace, or exclude some of the parts in this assembly. Now, because it's a new instance of this conveyor, I don't want to modify the original one. I need to actually copy all the parts. And you'll see that these ones, the, the, two, the channels down the center haven't allowed me to copy them. That's because this tick box at the bottom for reusing standard content and factory parts is selected. So I'm going to uncheck that, and go through again, and make sure that everything is set to copy. But the various foot plates and end connector plates are not going to change no matter how long or short this conveyor is or how tall the legs are. So I'm going to reuse those. Now I've got an option here to rename any of the components. And you'll see here that the new name of, of the components for the, this new instance of the conveyor are listed here. And they've all got a prefix called my, but I may, I may choose to call that iCopy2. You see I've applied that now. And so these parts will all be renamed with iCopy2 in front of them. You can go in individually and change file names if you want to. I'll OK that. And it's created an instance of that conveyor with its legs set to match the floor. I'll just turn off that center sketch. And I'll place another one. So the front of my new conveyor is actually going to be the end of the last one. And the bed level is going to be, <coughs> it's not letting me select it, I must have the wrong, I'd click the wrong point, but okay, the bed level there, move to the left side. Select the floor line, floor line for the second set of legs. Bed width is going to remain the same, and I'll now step through the file naming again. I want to reuse the components and, sorry, copy the components and reuse these components. I might choose to call that iCopy3. And there we have two instances of the conveyor with legs adapted to suit the floor. Now I'll say it again, 
if I were to now, if I had copied drawings with the iCopy command, and I were to open the second conveyor, it would have a new assembly drawing, exactly the same as the first one, with all the dimensions, bill of material information and everything, and the part files within it would also have drawings if they were copied, with new part, uh, part numbers, dimensions, etc. A very useful feature. Well, that's one way to use iCopy. I hope that's been helpful.